Big news coming out of the EU today. The European Union has demanded that Apple pay back about $15 billion in taxes to Ireland over what they say was an illegal sweetheart deal with the Irish government. Now, the Irish government, of course, would like to just write that off. They want to pawn it on their civilization to go ahead and make up for this taxes that they're lacking from these huge corporations. Apple is already threatening to cut jobs in Europe. Um, so, you know, here we have them playing ransom basically with their jobs. You know, how dare you come after us for these taxes? So joining me now is David Knight. And David, I just, I wanted to bring this story up because here we have uh, a corporation, they say uh, Google and Amazon could be next, but here we have companies that are already skirting their responsibility to pay U.S. taxes here by funneling funneling them through um, Irish headquarters and yeah. these countries offshore. But then when they actually do have jobs here in this country, they're giving them to uh, refugees and immigrants. And nothing underscores that more, Leanne, than this article that was on Breitbart today talking about Bill Clinton's comments saying that we're going to rebuild Detroit, but we're going to do it with Syrian refugees, not with Americans that are there. Right. Not of course, Detroit <laughs> used to be the center of our economy, Motown, Motor City. Now, I guess it's going to become Mohammed Town if he has his way. And he pointed out in the video that's uh, embedded in this article, Detroit has 10,000 empty, structurally sound houses, 10,000 of those. Hey, we could bring Syrian refugees in. We could rebuild the city with it. And they point out in Breitbart, this is exactly what Donald Trump had just said. He said Hillary Clinton would rather provide a job to a refugee from overseas than to give that job to an unemployed African-American youth in cities like Detroit who have become refugees in their own country. Right. And quite frankly, if she has her way, they just uh, brought in 10,000 refugees from Syria alone. Syria, where we have created a war, where we have created uh, massive collateral damage, hatred for the United States. We're going to bring the people in that we cannot vet. We're gonna bring them in in massive numbers. They just brought in 10,000. Hillary's announced she's going to do six and a half times that. And so right. the article points out that if they're able to do this, in Hillary Clinton's term, she could bring in more people than are currently living in Detroit from the Middle East. And as Trump has said, for the amount of money she's doing, we could rebuild every inner city here in America. But I wanna focus on the guy who is on the right side of that picture. As you're looking at that Clinton Global Initiative, let's talk about this Clinton crony capitalist billionaire that's on his right. That guy's name is Hamdi Yulukaya. Now, he is the guy who owns Shabani Yogurt. And what we have here is really a tale of yogurt and tuberculosis, a tale of rape and refugees, a tale of massive migration that is being pushed on us by globalist billionaires, and also control of the media in that small town, control of the government in that local small town. We're going to see all these different issues in here, but also, I think. The crowning achievement that we see here that has been uh, achieved by this Hamdi Yulukayat, this guy sits on the board of the Federal Reserve, and he's, he's not an American a citizen. He's a Turk, okay? He has not wow. given up his Turkish citizenship, but he is sitting on the board of the Federal Reserve, creating monetary policy here for the United States, and yet this guy is not even an American citizen. But he is highly connected globally. Listen to some of the titles that he's got. He's an eminent advocate to the United Nations Refugee Agency. He's a member of the Presidential Ambassadors for Global Entrepreneurship. He's received a UN Foundation Global Leadership Award, and most importantly, okay, besides his Federal Reserve membership, he has a special title with the president. He is his ambassador, President Obama's ambassador for global entrepreneurship, which means that he gets to meet privately with Obama without the press there. Now, who is this guy? As we said, he's a Kurd. He's a Turkish citizen. According to Bloomberg, he has a fortune of uh, $5.4 billion. That was back in 2013 and deep ties to the Clintons. How did he start? This is very key because this is a tale of how you get rich in America anymore. The rags to riches has to include a payoff to people in government. You have to buy them as well. This guy got his start back in 2005. He took out a small business loan from the government. With that, he bought a craft yogurt plant in New York. He launched it in 2007. In five years, Chobani was the number one selling Greek yogurt. Then he got serious. He bought a couple of New York senators. He bought Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand. And then he hired a big lobbying firm, Cornerstone Government, okay? The lobbying firm, he spent $700,000 lobbying with them since 2012. What did he get for that? Well, it ties in to Michelle Obama's school lunch program. He was able to, on a fast-track position, this is something for the tofu people to get included in the 
uh, school lunch program across the country. They spent uh, nearly a decade lobbying and begging the uh, USDA. He did it in only eight months. And what they did was they got them to say that they're going to replace meat with his yogurt on the, on the menu, okay? Right. And uh, so what he did with that, then he went to Twin Falls, Idaho, a small town with only 44,000 people, built the largest yogurt factory in the world, spending $450 million. Now, and uh, that was in 2012, as he was lobbying for the school lunch program. He's per pretty certain that was going to go through. Then in 2016, he announced a $100 million expansion of the factory because what he got initially, back in 2012 when he started this, he got a four-state pilot program that was given to him by the senators who had connections with the USDA. Now he's signed up in all 50 states to push that through. Now what is he doing in terms of pushing refugee immigration. He recently went to Davos and he told his fellow billionaires that they need to hack the refugee crisis. They need to hack it. How are they gonna hack it? They're going to bring in massive workers that they're going to hire instead of American workers. And this is what we said about open right. borders from the very beginning. And what I know he brags about that. Yes, what the, the globalists do is they export uh, jobs, they export the uh, factories rather, and then they import the workers. And that's what's going on here. And he's got already his founding members. He's going to have 100 multinational corporations. His founding members are UPS, MasterCard, LinkedIn, Western Union, IKEA, and others. What has it done to the small town of Twin Falls? Now, this is a small town with only about 44,000 people. He is bragging that 30% of his workforce is migrant refugees. He also brags that they speak 11 different languages. And he has to hire translators to work there 24-7, around the clock. Now, Idaho is one of the top five states to get refugees per capita. Many of them are sent to this Twin Falls area to work in the food business. And this was the location in June of this year mm -hmm. of the story that we covered about the rape of a five-year-old girl by three other juveniles. Now, they videotaped that rape. And it's an interesting story of media control as well. Because not only did we have the national media like Slate uh, calling out Infowars and saying, this is what they said uh, back in June. They said, the Drudge Report trumpeted the Infowars story with the headline, Syrian refugees rape little girl at knife point in Idaho. And this long article from Slate, they said, well, this is nothing but a bunch of rumors. It was put down by the government as well as by the local press there. They all said there's nothing to this. And yet you got people like the Drudge Report and Infowars pushing this. Now, Breitbart talked to the father he told them that he watched 30 minutes of that recording of what they did to his daughter, the rape, the attempted rape, the urinating on her by these kids before he couldn't take it any longer and broke down. It is not a fabricated story. And just in this month, in August, we had a 33-year-old mentally impaired woman raped by a guy named Muhammad there in that area, in that small town in Twin Falls. So it's a case of this massive billionaire coming into this town where there's only 44,000 people do you think that the local city government is going to stand up to him when he's going to bring in $550 million just in expenses there, not to mention right. the number of people that he employs? And then the press itself, they have a monopoly on the local press. This is the way they shut right. it down. Warren Buffett with uh, Berkshire Hathaway gave $11 million to the local press, and they have control of that media. This is an encapsulation of the way the crony capitalists, the multinationals work, they come in, and, and as I pointed out at the very beginning, I still cannot get over the fact that we've got a Turkish citizen because he's so connected to the Democrat Party, people like Chuck Schumer, people like the Clintons, that he can set on the Federal Reserve Board, that he can bring in these people without any control, without any consent of the people who live there by buying up the local press buying up the local government. It's right. an absolute and, amazing uh, story. And I know that we even reported on how some of the elected officials there said that they could press charges against anyone who would dare speak to the media or talk about, put stories out there, even on Facebook, yes. about these refugees who raped this five-year-old girl. They want to protect so much uh, the refugees that are coming in to work at this plant and one of the at the expense of the, their citizens there. I have to put this in real quickly. They have a 500% increase in tuberculosis. That is another one of the costs, right. as well as $54 million from the local and state community. That's the cost of the taxpayers. For this Unbelievable. Billion. Well, yeah. you got to watch where, like they say, vote with your dollars. I think I'm not going to be buying that yogurt anymore. <laughs> I'm not.
This is the answer for your children to totally absorb the multivitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, everything at once. Unveil Vitamin Mineral Fusion Advanced Multivitamin Formula, 30 servings, fruit punch flavored dietary supplement. It is simply amazing. InfoWarsLife.com. There's a million different products like this out there that they're, you know, they're good in different ways. But this takes all of the vitamins, all of the essential amino acids, all of the essential compounds and minerals that you need, puts it into something oh. that's great tasting as mm. opposed to like clumpy, gross stuff. And you can put it in your drink every morning. I put it in my protein shake. It is the platinum standard, in my view, of multivitamins in terms of an advanced multi-drink vitamin. The cleanest, the purest, new stuff had to be invented. That's why it took this long to even bring us something this good. Some companies are going to take a small amount of vitamins and make it, you know, so there's so much filler, it looks like there's a lot. This is ultra concentrated. We're not playing games here. Okay, this Well, is that's my problem. philosophy. That's your philosophy. Yeah. This is I want to, but again, there's some great stuff out there. Yeah. And there's other, you know. No, of course. Definitely. There's other powders I promote at InfoWarsHealth.com. Yeah, they're excellent. I mean, there's some good stuff out there. This is just the very best we can bring you. And when you buy it, you support InfoWars. You support the reporters. You support yourself. Tell folks about some of these uh, other things that are in this uh, and why this is just this total complete package uh, for your body. Because, uh, again, we didn't put the synthetic amino acids. We didn't put the synthetic vitamins. We didn't. We put the plant-based, high-quality, clean, natural uh, ingredients into this. Yeah, exactly. So you've got your standard vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, the list goes on. A huge amount of vitamin C, by the way. Tell folks yeah, about that. A thousand plus percent of your daily value, which is what you need. Because the, you know, FDA guidelines, we all know about those. Zinc, magnesium, selenium, L-glutamine. Each one of these you could go on for about 10 minutes about the benefits of these things. Alpha lipoic acid, folic acid, calcium, and the list goes on. 34 other ones you can check out. Go to InfoWarsLife.com. The label's up there. You've got the entire ingredients list that you can neurotically examine for yourself. And just... By the way, look on the other side, too, because uh, we're showing people the... Uh minerals and things. Let's look at the vitamins right there. Old Scott in there. I mean, it's amazing. It's the top left. Again, if you're radio listeners, Infowars.com forward slash show. Vitamin A has 4,333% uh, from beta carotene and what's the other source? I just know this all the best sources. Retinol. So you've also got your vitamin D at 1,000 IU, which is a large dose actually. And you know what? Some people could say, well, isn't this competing with the other products? Well, yeah, you know what? We could be like some people and just take all the stuff that we sell also at InfoWarsLife.com and not put any of it, but then it wouldn't be a balanced formula and we're not going to do that. And it might actually hurt us in the long run to put all the best stuff in here, but that's just the way we got to do it because we can't start thinking like that. So get them today, InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.